Okay, before we get back to the nano robot question, our assistant producer asked, have there ever been any cases that you're aware of where infants would have been born with this? Say their mother had it or something. Have you ever uh, dealt I, with I do. I have not worked directly with uh, any, but I do know that there have been some babies born with it. Um, and this was um, told to me by Shoshana Allison, who's been my media uh, person to collect all the information. Yes. Shame. Uh, can you imagine being a little baby and dealing with this? Now, tell us about these nanorobots. Well, nanorobots are uh, either they can be, um, in this case, more like uh, chemical-made um, materials, which have a specific function. Uh, this is very similar to uh, what we've experienced in everyday life as memory foam in our beds. It always goes back into a certain position. Uh, with nanorobots, uh, they uh, go into a certain area. They're programmed uh, to go in there, made to go into there, and only do one function or multiple functions. And in this case, uh, make a network that is very similar to a fiber optic network. So let's, within the body. So let's get, so, okay, fiber optics, and you earlier said something about silicone. Now, has there ever been any relationship? I, I'm sure people would wonder, okay, if somebody had, like, say, silicone breast implants, cause that, could that have any bearing on this? Yes, this could, because it could be a, a media to grow in. But the, the individuals that we have tested that had the uh, silicone and the silica crystals, they did not have any breast implants. They did not have any type of um, prosthetic or anything that could be related to silicone or silica. So it's got to have come then from the environment. Now you, we know of one case for sure where the, the chemtrail fibers were found and you could maybe put it together. I that was in two cases. I oh, knew Anna and also Lily. And yes. Lily. Okay. But, but there are chemtrails everywhere all the time. Correct. And they could have other chemicals in it. But one key that what, we're, what I'm calling the smart dust, where, where smart dust is a very, very small particle at nano size that has a specific function. This looks like if you look at certain times of the day and you see dust, but it's not dust. It's like an iridescent glitter very specifically different than regular household dust. Yeah. And this would be in areas we, where... We, where we have seen that. You know, a doctor, what, what uh, we, I got one of those 10 million uh, watt uh, spotlights. You go out at night and point it up to the sky, and you can't believe what's floating in the air. I mean, it's, it's really disgusting. Right. And if you're seeing this iridescence, which looks like just like glitter, that is uh, a... Um, engineered dust or smart dust type uh, material versus regular household dust or that does not reflect back. So here comes the conspiracy theory. If, uh, if, if, if Morgellons or Morgellons is related to chemtrails and it's coming out of the spray from airplanes, is there some grand plan to uh, uh, get this stuff into human beings? Well, it, I don't know if it was a plan or anything, but I will say that I'll, all of us have been exposed, all animals, all life forms on this planet. Uh, it's just a matter of what our genetic makeup is, what we have been chemically poisoned with uh, as an industry, oh, meaning man. working in industry versus uh, living in certain polluted areas that is allowing this to manifest more rapidly in individuals than ourselves. Now, is this considered, like, if, if you're handling this, you must be very careful. Is it something that could burrow its way in, like, like contagious? Well, I don't consider it contagious because what I've observed is that it has to have a specific chemical composition. And if, uh, like, I'll give you an example. Like, the ones where they have the lesions, where they have the discolorization of the skin, they have a lot of porphyria in their body, which is from pyrroles and thus chemical composition of pyrroles. And um, I, I basically know that it's a, uh, you know, man-made machine, as I call it. So it's not going to be likely passed from person to person. It's no, they're going to have to get the, it from the thing environment. Is, and why people can, I'm going to call it, be exposed and get it from other individuals is that those same people may be exposed to the same chemicals that this other person has been exposed to. Got you. Yeah, that allows it to be a growth media 
for these assemblers or whatever is going on.